This is Professor Paul, and this is part three of the Building an Argument lecture. Now let's think about how we're going to organize the paper itself. Of course, we begin with our introduction, and this is where you introduce the topic and the question. So what is the issue concerning marijuana and its legalization? You define that here. And you'd say what the basic positions are in this debate. There's a group that believes that it should be legalized because of A, B, and C. There's a group that believes it shouldn't be legalized because of D, E, and F. And then you announce your thesis, your argument. What is the position that you advocate? I advocate legalizing it because, and you briefly summarize your most significant reasons. So you give an outline, you give an overview of the topics that you're going to talk about, the position that you're going to take. And this will help your reader to understand what to expect and how to proceed through your argument. When you get into the body of the paper, it's useful, first of all, to define the problem and the stakes of the issue. So this is where you could give the historical background of this topic, the history of marijuana's legal status, of the movement to legalize it, um, what the current status of marijuana is, if there are any specific proposals that you're addressing, or if this is just about um, the idea of legalizing in general. And the stakes of the topic, that is, why are people concerned? So what are the major ideas that come up in the debate? This is important because it's connected to issues of crime, it's connected to concerns about health, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And why does each side think it's important? What do they wish to accomplish? What, what are they afraid will happen if they fail? So, um, and this is, in some sense, also filtered through your own perspective. Why are you concerned with this? Why are you concerned with, uh, in this case, arguing to legalize marijuana? And um, what are the consequences of not doing that? What are the consequences if we do? What's going to be solved if we do follow your proposal? And here's where you get into presenting your case. So this is where you just simply state your reasons to support the position. You give your the health benefits, economic benefits, etc. So what the main ideas are. And then the evidence that proves your reasons are valid. The study, the data, the anecdotes, etc. So a reason could be legalizing marijuana will provide a, a large increase in tax revenues, which can benefit uh, state and national economy. The evidence you use is a study showing the increase in tax revenues in Colorado after marijuana has been legalized. So your reasons supported by your evidence all tied to your overall claim of why it should be legalized. So some tips when it comes to presenting your case. Each individual reason should have its own paragraph or group of paragraphs if it's a, it's a complicated reason with a lot of evidence. So again, each reason, marijuana, legalizing marijuana will improve tax revenues. That should be discussed in its own paragraph. M legalizing marijuana will have uh, a number of medical benefits for people suffering from cancer. That needs to be discussed in its own paragraph. So some examples, you could start one paragraph Marijuana could provide a number of medical benefits if legalized. Professor X and Dr. Y have both argued that it is more effective that for cancer than blah, blah, blah. You could explain their basic um, argument, their thesis, and then you provide the evidence. In Professor X's studies, 80% of patients, blah, 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 blah. Um, the next paragraph, if you're continuing on to talk about medical benefits, you could say, in addition to benefits to cancer patients, medical marijuana can also treat vision problems such as glaucoma, as so-and-so has argued, etc., etc. So then you'd prevent the, present the evidence from a different source. So notice how I'm not talking about all the medical benefits in one paragraph. We're not talking about medical and economic and legal issues all in one paragraph. We're talking, taking each point very specifically and developing it, showing what the reason is, explaining how the evidence supports it, and connecting it to the overall thesis of marijuana should be legalized. Now, it's very important also when presenting your case that you differentiate between what you say and what your sources are saying. So what is it that they're contributing to your understanding 
What is it that they know that you wouldn't know without them telling you? But what have you learned or reasoned on your own? So you and your sources may agree on the basic claim. So you may agree that marijuana should be legalized. You don't need to support your holding that opinion by specifically saying, I believe that because someone else believes it. Uh, and they can, again, support this basic idea. Marijuana can provide many medical benefits. You've reasoned that out on your own from looking at the sources. But the sources provide you with the specifics that you wouldn't otherwise know. So they would need to be cited. So you could say on your own, without any citation, marijuana can provide many medical benefits. When you're talking about the specific benefits and how marijuana affects it or what, what the uh, effects are of its usage, then you would cite the specifics. Professor X concludes that mar medical marijuana is a more effective treatment for epilepsy users, epilepsy because users experience 45% fewer episodes than those who use conventional treatments, et cetera, et cetera. So this is differentiating between your argument and your source's argument. Always very important to make it clear who says what. Finally, when you're thinking about presenting your case, you want to think about what's a logical way to proceed through the reasons and the evidence that you're providing. You don't just list things in a random order. You don't want to just um, go chronologically through the articles that you found. You want to have some sort of logic. So the topics, the ideas that you're using to make your argument have some relation to each other. So if you're making the case that marijuana should be legal, you might begin your argument by saying one of the main benefits of making marijuana legal will be all the medical benefits that it provides. After you talk about the medical benefits, what would be logical to go to next? Well, you could say not only does marijuana have all these positive medical benefits, all the claims about its, uh, its negative effects are overstated or false. So you go from medical benefits to debunking the claims of marijuana's dangerous effects. It has positive effects, and the negative effects that are claimed for it are not true, or at least not as severe. And then where would you go next? Well, if you're talking about the negative effects of marijuana and disproving them, you could say, what are other stereotypes that we have about marijuana use? Talking about the users and the crime related to it. So you're going from debunking one set of stereotypes to debunking another set of stereotypes. When you, as you're challenging the stereotypes about users and crime, saying you know, people who use marijuana are not um, just stoner losers, uh, people who use marijuana are not um, more likely to commit crimes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. always, of course, basing this on the evidence that you found, then that could lead to arguments about the ineffectiveness of the, on, of the war on drugs. So not only have you, you're saying, not only are marijuana users not more likely to be criminals, but the war on drugs is in itself a negative thing, it causes all these problems, etc., 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 Discussing how the war on drugs causes all sorts of problems then could lead you to how legalizing marijuana would eliminate those problems. And that could lead on into, again, its own topic. So the important thing is to think about what is this connected to? What does this lead me to then ask or answer? What subjects are related to the topic that I'm addressing now? And would logically go from one to another? What would uh, my reader be able to easily follow and understand why I'm talking about one topic and have now moved to a different topic? The last uh, important thing to keep in mind in terms of presenting your case is not only do you want to present your own positive arguments for supporting your uh, your argument, you also want to address the counter arguments. What is it that people say who disagree with you? So don't ignore all the other evidence that you found, all the other research that you've done. You can, and the reason why addressing counter arguments is effective is for a number of reasons. A few of those are, one, it shows that you are an ethical researcher, that you're not trying to lie, that you're not trying to hide information from the other person to manipulate them. You're giving them all the, the information as you understand it. Honestly, you're making your conclusion and you hope that they agree with you. 
Um, it also answers potential problems and questions that your reader may have. Your reader may be aware of some of these counter arguments and have them in mind. So it addresses things that your reader is already thinking about. And finally, it shows your expertise. Not only does it show that you're not trying to lie or hide things, but that you really know what you're talking about because you've explored all aspects of the subject, not just what you already agree with or what supports your claim. You've looked at those things that challenge your claim, so we can trust that you know what you're talking about. There are a number of ways to actually address counter arguments, and there are two methods that I'll talk about. One is to focus on the counter argument as a whole, focus on it in its own paragraph. So one claim often made against legalization is that marijuana is a gateway drug. Author X writes that if children think that marijuana is acceptable, they will eventually turn to art harder drugs. He bases argument on blah, blah, blah. So this paragraph is starting off to, by addressing a counter argument, by giving us the evidence that's presented by someone who disagrees with our position. And this is a, a very effective if it's a really strong claim um, or if there's a lot of evidence, it's, it's a really common claim made by the other side um, that's important or is a main pillar of their argument, then it's useful to address it in its own paragraph. Um, another method is to incorporate it into a paragraph discussing one of your supporting points. So, for example, you're talking about how medical marijuana dot, 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 shows numerous benefits to cancer patients. In one study, 80% of patients reported improved symptoms. However, at least one counter study suggests that these results may be due to the placebo effect and not an effect of the marijuana itself. So if it's something that addresses a particular point or it's a, a really fine detail that addresses one of the issues that you brought up, one of the reasons that you brought up, it might be better to incorporate it when you're discussing that reason because then you can address it right there. So how do you address it or what do you say once you've incorporated? Well, do you have evidence that specifically challenge the, challenges the assertion made by the counter argument? So, for example, one claim often made against legalization is that marijuana is a gateway drug. This author argues that if children uh, think marijuana is acceptable, they will turn to harder drugs, blah, blah, blah. We might go on to provide the additional evidence that that author claims. However, a recent study by Professor Z demonstrates that the majority of marijuana users do not become users of other drugs. He writes that blah, blah, blah. So, ultimately, this claim is not persuasive. Uh, it does not uh, hold up in the majority of cases and thus is not valid for keeping marijuana illegal. So this is where you've got something that specifically challenges the assertions made by the other side. Doesn't necessarily disprove it completely, but it really undermines the claim uh, and says at least it's not something that's universally accepted. There is evidence that challenges it, that shows it to be a flawed idea. Another way to address a counter argument is to challenge the conclusions or the impact of the counter arguments. So let's take our example that says, however, at least one counter study suggests that these results may be due to the placebo effect and not an effect of the marijuana itself. Dot, dot, dot. You go on to talk about the evidence of that counter study. But then you can say, well, this is just one study. Maybe it's conclusions are not so strong. Maybe we, just because this one study suggests that, that doesn't necessarily mean the whole idea is false. So even if medical marijuana is not quite as effective as has been claimed by some advocates, there are numerous studies indicating that it has some positive effect. And further research beyond this single report is needed before the relief provided by marijuana can be dismissed as merely a placebo. So we're saying, yeah, this article does have a point, but it's only, in this case, one article versus a whole bunch of others. And so if we're going to consider this, this issue, we have to do more research. There's enough positive evidence to still support my basic claim that marijuana is a benefit to medical science. Finally, what if the counter argument just makes a valid point? What if there's not necessarily a specific challenge you can make to the counter argument? What if it's an issue that really does need to be considered? 
Um, how can you incorporate its concerns and suggestions into your argument? So although marijuana does not directly lead to the abuse of hard drugs, so-and-so is right to be concerned about the effect of drug use and the way that drugs are represented in popular culture. Even if a kid who tries marijuana is unlikely to become a serious drug addict, we still need to teach children to make careful decisions and to understand the potential risks of any substance use, legal or illegal. So here, what you're saying is, yeah, maybe this isn't necessarily something that's going to be a huge problem, but I understand their concerns and I agree with the basic issue that they're concerned with. I disagree with the solution, which is to keep marijuana illegal. I disagree with that, but I agree with the concern. And this is important because, again, even though you're debating, even though you're arguing, you don't hate the other side. You're not trying to destroy them. You want to work with them to find a solution to a common problem. So this shows that you're not a jerk. You're not just trying to humiliate or uh, totally prove the other side completely wrong. You're saying we share concerns. We share a common goal. The difference is how we think we should achieve that goal. After you've presented your case, then we come to the conclusion of your argument. In your conclusion, you want to reiterate the basic thesis, although in somewhat more sophisticated terms, because now your reader has read your argument. So instead of just repeating your thesis word for word, you want to state it slightly more developed, a more complicated version of it. You can briefly remind your audience of the main reasons behind your argument. What are the main, main uh, uh, ideas that you brought up in support of your claim? You want to articulate your goal or purpose. That is, what are the consequences of your argument? What's the practical action that should be taken or the new understanding that your audience should be aware of? And communicate to your audience the significance of your argument, why it's important to them, why they should care, why they should act. This is the last stage of your paper, the last step where you're bringing it all together and saying, I've made this argument. This is what I've told you. This is why it's important for you. So let's review. Your argument needs to begin with a clear statement of the problem that you're investigating and your thesis about that problem, what your answer is, what you think should be done to solve the issue. You wanna organize your paper based on the most significant reasons, the most important ideas that support your argument. And so it's those ideas, not the data, not all the details and bits of information that you found in your research, but the ideas that they can lead you to, that they've caused you to reason out or infer or understand based on your research. And then you want to provide clear, concrete evidence to support your reasons. What's the facts? What's the data? What's the information, the logic that's being used by your sources that leads you to your conclusion? You want to address the counter arguments. So in your essay one, where you talked about position A believes this, position B believes this, no matter what side you're taking, you still want to address the other side through addressing and trying to respond to their counter arguments. It's very important throughout the paper to differentiate between what you say and what they say, what your sources argue, what they have found out, what their ideas and evidence are, and what you then reason out or conclude based on what you've learned in your research. And finally, make sure that you have a clear goal, a clear purpose or argument. So you are not just trying to get information about some topic, but you have a problem you're trying to solve, a solution you're trying to put forward, and an issue or phenomenon you're trying to understand. So it's not just, I want to know what the effects of marijuana are, but I want to know what the effects of marijuana are so I can determine whether or not it should be legal. So that clear direction for your paper is essential.